Hi, welcome back to the Teeny Tiny Kitchen. Um, it's a little bit dark, it's a little bit wintry, it's a little bit rainy, possibly a little bit snowy. Um, so I'm gonna make something nice and cozy and nice, what that little dance was. Um, we're gonna make snickerdoodles today. Um, if you've never heard of snickerdoodles, I don't blame you. Um, they are a really lovely biscuit cookie type thing they remind me a little bit of amaretti biscuits uh with their texture um they are there's there's a little bit of debate as to the origin of snickerdoodles um some people saying that they come from germany um, and some people saying they come from the united states and i think it's probably a combination of, of both um but regardless they are super delicious and very easy to make and they're basically just these cute little cinnamon sugar cookies um, so let's, let's get started what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put in I've got some sugar and some butter so I've got 60 grams of unsalted butter um, and a hundred and sixty grams of caster sugar so I'm gonna pop that into my KitchenAid bowl now you can do this with uh, a handheld electric whisk or you can do it by hand if you so desire but as I say every time I do a video I like to use the KitchenAid so I'm gonna pop that in and with that I'm gonna pop in some vanilla extract and I'm popping in find it I think it's a quarter of a quarter of a teaspoon is that my quarter teaspoon yeah quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla extract there we go. so just going to mix that all together until the um, butter and sugar combined and it's light and fluffy It's important to remember that your butter should be really nice and soft because if it's not, it's not going to combine properly with the sugar and, you're going to, and it's all going to be a bit clumpy and horrible. Um, mine's a little bit clumpy and horrible, unfortunately, purely because it's so freaking cold in my kitchen. Freaking, freaking cold. Um, so what I'm going to do now is now that's all mixed together, I'm going to add one egg. And that goes. Give that a mix. So now I've added the egg, I'm just gonna scrape down the sides of the bowl, um, which you probably have to do if you're using the handheld um, electric whisk or even if you're doing it by hand, you just need to make sure that all the sides are scraped down to make sure everything's incorporated. So give that another mix. That's gorgeous. I'm gonna scrape that down again. So now we have our eggy, buttery, sugary mixture. We need to add in our dry ingredients. Now in here, I did pre-do it because no one wants to watch me sifting, it's boring. Um, so yeah, you do have to sift unfortunately and that's basically because if you don't, the biscuits aren't gonna be that beautiful, smooth consistency that you want. So in here, I have got some plain flour, uh, which is, let's remember, 240 grams of plain flour. I've got an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. I've got a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. I've got three quarters of a teaspoon of cream of tartar and a half a teaspoon of bicarbonate soda sifted all that together um, and now we're going to add that to our uh, butter sugar and egg i'm not going to do it all in one go we're going to do it in two to three batches just to make sure it's all incorporated properly i'm going to pretend i didn't spill it all over the side Again, you probably will have to scrape down 
um, flour does tend to um, find its way up the sides of the bowl. Last bit of flour going in. So you just want to mix this now until it uh, turns into a dough. So it'll, it'll all kind of combine together, squish together, and it will make a really lovely dough. So once you get to that stage, you're basically done. So it's going to keep mixing that for now. And we're getting there. So the mixture's all coming together now. Um, basically because um, it's all coming together, it's all picking up all the bits of flour and everything from the sides of the bowl. Um, so that's another indicator that your dough's ready, um, is that it will start picking up those um, extra bits from the side and it'll all start coming together into a ball. show you so it's sort of it's soft it sort of it, it's a little bit like wet sand in a way um, when it all kind of comes together um, so I'm just gonna get this off my paddle attachment that out get this off Got a sleeve so you should now be able to squish it all together into a lovely, lovely ball of, I can't even think what colour that is. It's just kind of, it's brown, isn't it really? It's brown. Lovely ball of dough, Here we go. Look at that. So that's what you're looking for. That, that's, the, that's the texture, that's the consistency, that's the colour that you want. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab some uh, cling film, if I can find it, uh, somewhere under here, like this, um, you can leave it in the bowl and cover the bowl, um, but because my fridge is so tiny and slightly full up of stuff at the moment, I'm just going to wrap the dough directly in cling film, so I'm just going to wrap that inkling and then that's going in the fridge to rest for at least 40 minutes so 40 minutes to an hour um because that will give the the butter a chance to to reharden, and re-solidify um and that makes it much easier when you're cooking if it's if it's runny when you cook them they're not going to work so you need to make sure you chill your dough before you try and cook these uh, these cookies okay so that's going in the fridge for 40 minutes to an hour Okay, so my dough has had its sort of 40, 45 minutes um, in the fridge. Um, so I've just taken it out and it's, it's, quite, it's quite hard now, which is what you want. Um, otherwise, as I say, it's not gonna, it's not gonna cook properly. Um, so I'm gonna unwrap this. Okay, you can have a look and see, ta -da. Um, While I was waiting for that to, uh, to chill, I have put the oven and I've preheated that to 170 degrees, which is gas mark three. Um, and I've also mixed together um, one and a half tablespoons of caster sugar and a tablespoon of cinnamon. And this is the, um, the, sort of the coating of the biscuit. I've used um, golden caster sugar um, throughout, um, and that's purely because that's what I have. Um, you can use white caster sugar, it's not a problem. I just really like the, the, the golden caster sugar. It gives it a nice kind of caramelly flavour. I've also got um, a baking tray here, which I'm just going to pop a bit of um, baking paper on just to make sure they don't stick. Now I've only got one um, shelf in my oven. If you have two, um, you can actually uh, do uh, two lots of these because you have to actually only put sort of five or six on the tray in one go because um, they do spread as they cook so you probably will need to do a couple of batches um, so mine's going to take ages because I only have the one shelf but if you have two shelves and you have two baking trays do it in, in um, you can do one batch in, on two uh, shelves trays thing yeah all right so I'm going to take the dough and I'm going to break off about 
um, a walnut sized piece so that's probably a little bit too big there we go about about that big um, so we're going to do I'm going to roll it into a ball and then I'm going to dunk it in my lovely sugary cinnamony mixture to make sure the whole thing's covered coated I'm going to pop it on my baking tray. I'm just going to squish it down just a tiny bit so it sticks. And I'm just going to keep doing that. And this dough will keep in the fridge. So um, if you wanted to, um, to make one batch now um, and then make another batch sort of later in the week, it will, it will probably keep for about three days. Leave some room between the um, the dough the dough balls um, as you go because, as I said earlier, they do spread when they cook. Now, obviously, you could make really tiny ones of these. Um, this mixture makes um, about, I'd say, 18, 14, 18 um, cookies. But if you obviously, if you want to, you could make bigger ones. Um, or you can make smaller ones it's up to you obviously the smaller ones would be nice and dainty and you could then fit a few more on your tray um, but probably you won't need to cook them for as long uh, when they're slightly smaller and if they're slightly larger you probably need to cook them a bit longer my oven tray is actually quite big so i'm going to try and fit a few more on um, in this instance, but with a smaller tray, I probably wouldn't chance it. You want to make sure they're all really, really nicely coated with your cinnamon sugar mixture. They start looking a little bit like um, chocolate truffles um, as you do this. And actually it's a, the, the coating is this, it's a similar process to, to when you do make chocolate truffles is that you obviously you, you wanna coat them in, in um, cocoa or nuts. So it's that, that beautiful coating that you get on the outside. Okay, let's see if I can fit two more on here. wrap my dough back up. So I just realised you probably can't see what I'm doing very well. I haven't set the um, camera up particularly well today. You just kind of see me talking at you. So there we go. Cinnamon, cinnamon sugar and a little lovely snickerdoodle dough balls. Okay. So I'm going to wrap um, the rest of my dough back up and I'll pop it back in the fridge. Um, if you are doing in a few batches, I would recommend in between putting it back in the fridge because, um, as I said earlier, you want the um, the butter to re-solidify so it actually um, cooks nicely. I've got slightly fake tan style hands from the um, from the cinnamon. Right, so I'm going to pop these in, and these take ten between ten and fifteen minutes. You might find that they take slightly less, maybe thirteen minutes. Um, my oven can be a bit temperamental and I tend to find that they always take slightly longer. Um, so I'm going to pop mine in um, for 10 minutes to begin with and I'm going to give them a check. Um, just pop those in. Oh no, I've just lost one. I've just lost one! It's rolled off. Hold on. Let's take him. Let's try that again, shall we? All right, in the oven they go. I'm going to put the timer on for 10 minutes and hopefully 
we will have some beautiful, beautiful snickerdoodles. So I'm just eating my own hair. I'm so hungry for my biscuits. Um, in about 10 minutes. We'll see you then. Oh, they look perfect. Look at those. So they should all have these beautiful little cracks on them. They'll be slightly tough on the top to touch. Um, and they probably will slide around. If, then, if they don't slide, they're probably not ready, but they should be a light golden brown and they should be slidey. So I'm gonna leave those on the um, baking tray just for a few minutes just to let them um, set. Uh, and then after that, you take them off um, the, the tray and you put them onto your wire rack to cool completely. So I just I want one to be cool enough so I can show you the um, what the interior is like. It's too hot. Bear with me. I'll come back. Okay, so I have transferred my snickerdoodles onto my wire rack. Okay. Um, still a little bit warm, but I just want to um, grab one just to show you the, how they are on the inside. Look, oh, look at that. Can you see? So they've got a really lovely kind of cookie type texture on the inside, but because of the, um, the cinnamon and everything, they're just, I can't really explain the texture. You just have to eat them, make them eat them. Well, Mmm, so good. Excuse me, I'm just gonna see. Do the smile on my face. Mmm, that cinnamon sugar coating really just adds an extra depth. Don't talk with your mouthful. So so tasty, so delicious. I am gonna finish this now because. How could I not? Um, so there we go. Snickerdoodles. Please have a go at making them. Uh, comments below. Um, as always, I will put sort of around here somewhere what you need, um, the uh, oven temperatures, that kind of thing. Um, like the video, subscribe, share. Be good. Um, and I'll be back so thank you for watching and uh, I hope you uh, make these snickerdoodles because quite frankly they're just heaven so yeah I'm good bye